Um, personally, I think could uh, benefit. Uh, personally, I think this could benefit. Uh, personally, I think this could benefit teams and y uh, youngsters at a youth level. Now, just in case you're wondering uh, where Chris is today, Chris is uh, unwell. He's unable to join us, but he's uh, live tweeting throughout this game. So he he will be um, he will uh, hopefully get well soon. Now, personally, I think this is a little good little good experience for them because it's. Uh, puts them in the shoes of the futsal players. Now hopefully um, in years to come Manchester still have a youth academy set up which they'll be able to bring more young, young players through. As we talked about earlier with uh, Marcos, he said they've only got one uh, young player in the team so he would like to bring in more players to pass down the captaincy and then eventually give younger players, especially young English players, the opportunity to come into the futsal setup. Now, in a moment, we have got an interview with uh, Misa, the goalkeeper from the Manchester um, futsal team, who was uh, playing last week against Middlesbrough. And uh, he, he, he uh, talked to us um, a little bit earlier this week, talked to me on you know, what it's like to be a keeper. Don't forget, by the way, to hashtag Total Futsal to share the game on Twitter and Facebook throughout today. This game is live and exclusive on Ustream, so don't forget to share it, as that really does help us out here. Well, we've got that interview coming up now with Misa, and I caught up early with him earlier this week, just before a training session. Okay, what's your name and your position, please? Hello, my name is Misa, and I'm uh, one of the goalkeepers. Is it tough uh, being a goalkeeper and being the number one keeper for your team? Well, it certainly is, because uh, we must not forget that there is only like one position for three or four players. Hence, you know, it's very difficult to not only to get there, to, but to, to maintain yourself at that level for, like, for, for the whole season. Why don't some uh, futsal goalkeepers wear gloves? I think it's important for a goalkeeper to, to, to be accurate with the ball in your hands and I think gloves will prevent you from, from being that accurate and uh, I think that you know, we, we used uh, to, to, to not to wear gloves, at least in Spain, is, is, not, is not a tradition as you, as you can see and, and I think it's very important for us to, to, to have a like, good grip of the ball, good control of it and, and hence we don't, at least myself personally, I don't like wearing gloves at all. Okay. Um, would you be able to come outside your area? Uh, do you think it's important that you are good at shooting and dribbling on the ball? I mean, of course, we we need to possess you know every single uh, skill to obviously to be a good goalkeeper. But uh, in modern futsal, I think is not is not that important. Although it is it is very good to have them, but I think a good goalkeeper wouldn't necessarily need to have. Uh, you know, like shooting skills or, or like dribbling skills, uh, because for that, you know, the outfit players are there just to sort to do the job <laughs> for us. Okay, uh, how important is it to you to have a, a keen eye on um, on the ball at all times? I think concentration is the most important feature a goalkeeper must uh, possess, because obviously you are at the back, you see everything, and you're pretty much in control of uh, every single uh, aspect of the game from the back, so I think that you've got to keep an eye not only on the ball, but also on the players, and not only on your players, but on the, you know, other, on the opposite teams as well, so. Uh, well, looking ahead to Sheffield, what do you think the, the focus is for this weekend's game against Sheffield? Obviously, we've got to get the three points, and, uh, and I think we will get the three points. Uh, I think that uh, no matter what happened in the last game, we've proved a much better team than them. Um, but it's a matter of concentration, you see, it's a matter of taking it seriously it's right from the beginning, right when uh, the minute we step into the pitch to warm up. And, uh, but I think deep down, that we're better, they know that we're a better team, uh, we've proved it so far, and, uh, and I think that on Sunday we're going we're gonna to do a very good game and we're going to you know, finish the game with three points and, and, you know, and, a, and, and most of all, uh, you know, good good feeling that we're gonna. Obviously, it's a preparation ultimately for for the uh, for the play, you know, for the no matter what happens. So, I think we've got to take this game as zero as any any what. So, um, and I think everything will be will be very good for us on Sunday if we concentrate and just do our job. Okay. So we're almost ready to go back to our match commentary. Almost ready to go back with our match comments this soon. Just before we do go back to them, the sheer amount of people here today is outstanding. I mean, we've been here for the past, I don't know, six or seven home games now against Middlesbrough, Derby, Leeds, and we've never seen this amount of people here. It's pr primarily due to the fact that this is 
potentially the title decider for Manchester. So hopefully, hopefully it's nice to see a lot of people here. Well, it's time to hand back over to our match commentary team of Cass Embrays and Matthew Jump. Right, thanks for that, Josh. Cheers, Josh. As uh, Josh was saying, we have got a huge lineup. Um, crowd, sorry. There's not even enough seats. I know it's it's very tough for us to even see the game. It's great for the players, though. Like if, if you come to play and the uh, they have all these people watching them, and as you can see now, this is um, the league standings, and obviously Manchester one point behind Sheffield. So this is a big game for them. We've got to win. Is that half time? You've seen the kids uh, have a little kick about. I think that's great.